I've been having quite a difficult time finding some good lumber for my replica 1800s golf clubs. What I uh, wanted to do was use traditional woods such as beech, apple, pear, and I've made clubs out of those, but it's not always easy to find. So right now I can't find any of that. So I've been going to uh, you using hard maple. So that's easier to find in thicker pieces because maple's pretty prominent compared to some of those other woods. So here's a piece of maple, and this is 12 quarter or three inches thick, and it's advertised as hard maple. So uh, this is another piece, a chunk left over from cutting this head out. So you can see this is a hard maple head, and you can see these pock marks, these indentations. You can almost play pick tic-tac-toe on this one with the grid mark, and this is from the the grid lines of the gutta percha ball hitting it. And I can feel an indentation here and other like little pock marks. I can feel, I can just feel them all over the place. So I don't think this is a very hard wood, even though it's advertised as hard maple. It really shouldn't indent like that. This is some beech that I found as roadkill near, nearby and um, used it. And this has no indentations at all. Perfectly smooth. And I've been using it quite a bit. This is a club that Kelly Leonard made out of another harder wood. His mystery wood that we're not disclosing yet. But again, no indentations on that thing. So I determine uh, what wood is good. I, this is a learning process for me still. And, you know, the traditional ways are to measure the density of the wood. So you can just lift up the wood. And if the wood feels heavy then that's a good sign as long as it's dry. It's got to be under 10% uh, moisture. Uh, so that's one method. Another way to uh, measure, actually measure the density. So I measure the length times width times height of this board and weighed it on a scale. And I got my density measurement of 0.55 grams per cubic centimeter, which translates to 34.3 pounds per cubic foot. And looked at the wood database on online that says hard maple should be 39.6 to 48.4. And I'm only getting 34.3. So that puts me in the soft maple range. So as a crude test, you could take your fingernail and put it on the corner or put it, see if you can make a mark, which I'm making some marks here. Um, now here's some persimmon. And this is only two inches thick, so I can't make. So, like there, you don't you don't really see any mark. You can barely see something. So that's a crude test, but not a terrible test. the The test I like, if you don't have any any equipment, is to use a gutta percha ball and just bang it. And if you can feel any indentation at all, which I do on this, and I don't on the persimmon, so the maple has an indentation. Uh, but the persimmon does not. Hard maple, typically, you shouldn't be able to do that. Like, think of a bowling alley with those. You're not, when that bowling ball hits the floor, it's not denting the floor every time. I would bet this maple would dent um, if you threw a bowling ball on it. So, I try to find a more scientific way. The most scientific way is to use what's called a Janka hardness uh, tester, which is you take an 11 millimeter bead, you take a a hydraulic press, see how many pounds of pressure it requires to indent that ball halfway in. And I don't have that equipment, it's expensive, um, so I'm not able to jank a hardness test the wood that I have. Um, but you can look it up and get an idea, at least what species to, to consider. There are other factors besides uh, the hardness. There's also the resiliency uh, like if, if of impact, the impact resistance. So uh, some woods, like uh, apple, are pretty hard, but they're not quite as resilient as beech. Beech here is um, a lot more forgiving in terms of, like, if you took a hammer to it, there's more likelihood that, that this will crack because it's it's more brittle wood than beech. Uh, and then, it's still a good wood, and that's, this was the wood that was used uh, a lot in the feathery era, as was hawthorn, which I don't have, and uh, Swiss pear or European pear here. Later on, after uh, near the end of the gutta percha era, they were using dogwood. 
So we're talking late 1800s. And then they went to persimmon, which they used throughout most of the 20th century. They didn't really use maple much. I mean, I saw advertisements uh, in some ads of maple. Let's see if I have, I might have an ad here. Well, I don't, I'm not sure where it is, but um, actually here it is, I think. Uh, no, that's for the shafts. But they used oak sometimes uh, and maple, and sometimes they even used holly. Back, even back in the old days, they used holly. So what I found out was you can get this meter. It's called a Shore D durometer. Shore D is the scale that they use. And there's a little pin here. So what you do is you push this durometer down into the wood until uh, you get a reading, until it bottoms out. So... Let's do it on, so I got these numbers here. These are the numbers I got, but let's do it on this supposed hard maple. And I'm getting 52. So these are the numbers you get, depending on where you measure it. Sometimes if you do it on a grain line, it's going to be different. So low 50s, mostly mid 50s. Um, this is persimmon. I'm getting 68, 69, 71. Beach also very very high numbers. So I think anything above sixty five isn't denting. So based on these woods that I've used, this beach is is the beach I used for this club. Oh no, this this isn't the one. There was another another set of uh, logs that I used. But anyway, I'm getting pretty high numbers above sixty five. Here's apple at sixty six seventy two. Depends on where you measure it. Pear was sixty seven seventy. Dogwood. 74, 72, um, and then pine, 41, southern yellow pine. Hickory is a hardwood. We know it's a hardwood, 72, 73. So I like this meter. I think it's um, something you could bring to the lumber yard with you. Um, if you're making any, doing any sort of woodworking that requires something, some type of wood that needs to be hard, uh, even like flooring. Flooring needs to be hard to resist the indentations just don't let them see you creating the pock marks with your with your meter oh yeah and i forgot about lignum vitae which is one of the hardest woods and i'm getting about 76 to 80 so i use this to repair hand planes um, if there's a problem with that now there are other ways to know if you have hard maple or soft maple and one way is to look at the with a magnifying glass and see if you see a certain type of ray pattern. The other way is to take, oh, where's my piece of wood? Oh, here it is. Take some ferrous sulfate or some iron pills and uh, see if you get a certain color. It's supposed to be blue for hard maple, which is this, this kind of blue, and um, blackish for soft maple. So this might be hard maple technically or sugar maple, but um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not getting the hardness out of it that I want, nor do I have the correct density. This is a piece of hard maple here, I believe. Um, and I'm getting 66, 62, 67. Um, so that's significantly higher than what I got here with this piece that's supposedly hard maple, but I'm getting in the low 50s mostly. So just one tool here. I'm not a paid spokesman for this, but the Shore D durometer uh, might be of benefit to woodworkers.